It's a pleasure for me today to have an opportunity to wish all of you a, a very happy Thanksgiving from the Dallas Cowboy team and, and our organization. For all the people that are not fortunate enough to live in the state of Texas, I'd like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And from all of us at NBC Sports, a happy, warm Thanksgiving hello from Irving, Texas. Dick Emberg with Marilyn Olson. We're pleased to join us. Tom Landry's Dallas Cowboys have lost two in a row against the Houston Oilers. Bum Phillips has his team headed toward the playoffs. <laughs> and the bum in his usual sectorial attire with his cowboy hat and his boots on the sideline. A cool day here in Dallas. Dick and some great who started his NFL career after coming here from Austria with the Dallas Cowboys now kicking for the Houston Oilers. We'll send it deep to Steve Wilson 81 Ron Springs number 22 rookies for the Cowboys. A game on which you can measure much of this NFL season and the hopes of both teams heading toward possible playoff spots. A sidewinder that skips to Springs. Springs from Ohio State at the 15. He's out to the 25, and they're buried in the Columbia blue of the Houston Oilers, spearheaded by Guido Merkins, number 12. The Cowboys take the field with the veteran Roger Staubach at quarterback, Tony Dorsett, and Robert Newhouse in the backfield. Wide receivers, veteran Drew Pearson, Tony the Thrill Hill, and at tight end, Billy Joe Dupre. have played the Oilers only twice in the regular season and have won both. Sabak throws on first down. He hits Pearson. Tackled immediately at the 31. It's a gain of five. J.C. Wilson, left corner, made the hit for the Oilers. Let's check that Dallas offensive line. Pat Donovan at left tackle. Herb Scott, left guard. Dennis Robert Shaw, the rookie, is at center. Could be a key position for Dallas today. Tom Rafferty at right guard. And the veteran big cat, Rayfield Wright, starting at right tackle for Jim Cooper. Second and five for Staubach, the number one passer in the National Football League on the rating system. On second and five, it's Dorsett. using his speed to drive near a first down across the 35. Greg Stemrick finally corralled him. You talked about that key matchup in there between Shaw and Culp. Culp gets around nicely, but watch him here as he misses a tackle. What should have been an easy tackle on Tony Dorsett. Dorsett makes the most of it. Number 33 breaks away for the first down or what appears to be first down yardage. We'll have our first official measurement of the day, and while well, they measure for a Dallas first down or not, let's check the defensive alignment for the Oilers. It is not a first down third and inches. The Oilers set up defensively in that 3-4 front. With Andy Doris at left end, Curly Culp at the nose guard, and Elvin Bethay at right end. Four linebackers, Ted Washington, Greg Bingham, rookie Daryl Hunt, and Robert Brazil. J.C. Wilson at one corner, Greg Stemrick at the other, and the safeties for the Oilers, Vernon Perry, and the man who leads the NFL in interceptions, Mike Reinfeld. He has 12 in the first 12 games. That 12 is one more than the entire Dallas team with 11. An amazing stat for that young man. Third and less than a yard. Jay Soldi in motion. Newhouse has running room. 40. And he's all the way to the 44. A gain of nine. First down, Dallas. Robert Newhouse, the third cowboy to rush for more than 4,000 yards in a career. Some concern here in Dallas about the output of that fullback position. Newhouse has been injured during part of this year. He's splitting time with Scott Laidlaw. You just saw Laidlaw coming into the game, running the plays in from the sideline. If Dallas can run the football, and they've started out running well, they can give Houston all they want today. Dick. Merlin, we refer to Dallas as being a desperate team. That seems strange for Club 8 and 4, but they really had their problems of late, and there's a much concern in the camp of Dallas. 
Staubach to throw. Going deep. Drew Pearson is open. Touchdown. Staubach to Pearson. Dallas scores. There is no more beautiful play in all of football than the long bomb. And Drew Pearson and Roger Staubach have teamed up to form one of the best combinations in the NFL. At least there's nothing more beautiful for Dallas fans. Not nearly so pretty for the Houston Oilers. But look at this perfectly thrown pass and look at the range that he opened up on J.C. Wilson. Drew just pulled away beautifully, spikes it into the end zone. Six points, they'll go for the seventh. Pearson in his 99th consecutive game gets the bomb. Here's Raphael Septien's kick. It's good. So the Cowboys take the kickoff and score immediately on a Staubach to Pearson pass. Seven to nothing Dallas. Quick look at Drew Pearson. He just runs right past J.C. Wilson, who apparently could not believe that they were just going to run it up on him. But there it is. It's almost too easy, and I'm sure that's something that will concern Tom Landry a little bit. He wants his team to sustain that kind of emotion throughout this game. 56 yards for the touchdown, Drew Pearson. Just underway, two minutes gone. Dallas leads 7-0. Roger Staubach, the veteran from Navy, has thrown a long touchdown pass. Dallas leads 7-0, just two minutes plus gone as Septien kicks it off. at the 10. Rookie from USC breaks out at the 25 and down at the 30. The tackle made by Aaron Kyle, number 21 for Dallas. Dan Pastorini takes his team onto the field and with him in the backfield, the great second-year man from Texas Earl Campbell and the blocking back Tim Wilson of Maryland. Wide receivers, veteran Richard Castor on one side. Ken Burrow double zero on the other with a tight end Mike Barber. Pastorini shooting at 49 percent on the season. Earl Campbell slips at the 33. It'll be second and seven. And had he stayed on his feet there was just one man to run over and you know Big Earl can do that. Offensive line blocking for Pastorini and Campbell. Left to right along that front, Leon Gray, the former Patriot at left tackle. Conway Heyman at left guard. The veteran center is Carl Mock. On the right side, Ed Fisher and Morris Towns. Second down, call it a short seven. First throw complete to the tight end Barber, rocketed out of bounds at the 38 yard line, short of a first down. Randy Hughes came over from his safety spot to make the hit. Third down and uh, about a yard and a half for Houston. John Dutton makes his first start as a Baltimore, uh, from Baltimore now with Dallas. Larry Cole moves inside at left tackle. Larry Bethay at right tackle. And Harvey Martin, top pass rusher on the right side for Dallas. The linebackers for the Cowboys and the deep backs will check for you. Third down, a lesson two. Campbell, first down and more. 50, 40, 30, 20. Touchdown, Houston. Oh, my, what a start to this one. 61 yards for Campbell. A tremendous offensive, offensive explosion by Dallas to start the game, and Houston answers the call. Earl Campbell, 61 yards down the sideline, and that man with all of his strength just ran away from the Dallas defense. Now Campbell in short yardage, and once he broke through, he still had the speed to beat the defensive backs. The danger of short yardage always, you stack your people at the line of scrimmage, and if you break clean, you really have to run him down from behind. No one was going to catch Earl Campbell on that play. That's the longest run this year by the Oilers. Tony Frisch into the fading sun. And he hits it right down the middle. So Staubach to Pearson. 
56 yards. Earl Campbell counters with a 61-yard gallop. And here in Irving, Texas, we've played three minutes, 18 seconds, and both teams have seven. So an electrical start here on this Thanksgiving day. The Dallas area, Tony Frisch. Cowboys at the other end are Steve Wilson, Ron Springs, Earl Campbell. What a player. Deep to Springs, short hops it. Picks it at the six. To the 21-yard line goes Ron Springs. It'll be Dallas starting at that point. Let's go back to the touchdown by Campbell and look at the blocking in front of number 34. Mike Barber, number 86, right there gets it started with a fine block on Dee Dee Lewis. Ed Fisher, number 60, comes out, shields Bob Brunick, 53, and from there on out, it's all Earl Campbell, and he just fires those big thighs of his down the field. What a tremendous touchdown. Seven plays, already two touchdowns, an explosive start to this Thanksgiving Day game. Dallas tied at seven. Just underway, 11 and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Robert Newhouse gets out to about the 25-yard line. Robert Brazil, 52. And Greg Bingham, 54, two of the Houston linebackers in on the stop. The dean of the NFL coaches, Tom Landry, in his 20th year and perhaps never more perplexed since, oh, back in the early days when the Cowboys won rarely. Dick, I asked him, I said, what is wrong? You really have stumbled in the last four weeks. You were actually lucky by their own admission to win in that New York Giant game. He said, I wish I knew. I can't put my finger on it. Even the computer age isn't giving him the answers. Second down and six. Little trap, and it's Newhouse pulling his way near the 28-yard line. Culp and Brazil and company to make the tackle. It's short of the first down and brings up third and about three. We talked about a critical matchup in the center between Curly Culp and Robert Shaw. You see it right here. Shaw trying to turn Culp, but number 78 is battle-wise. Works right across his head and gets a piece, but Shaw, to his credit, stayed with Culp all the way, would not give up, and actually ended up neutralizing Curly, although the play does not go for the first down. It's going to be third and about three yards to go, Dick. Shaw, the rookie at center, that may take away some of that spread formation of the Cowboys that requires the blind snap done so well by John Fitzgerald, who is injured. First down as Preston Pearson, the oldest running back in the National Football League, makes another reception. What fine receiver he is. In an age of specialists, the Dallas Cowboys are very happy to have number 26 back in the lineup. He spent a good part of the year injured, but watch him here. He knows how to run defenses perfectly, and he runs some of the best pass patterns in football, finds the open spot. Greg Bingham, Bingham gets there, but too late, and it's a first down for the Dallas Cowboys. Hurt this year, Pearson, with not his usual total. He caught 47 last year. First down, Dallas, 7-7 tie, nine and a half minutes left, first quarter. Ball at the 37, and it's Newhouse. He was stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Brazil. Was able to break out of his tackle and Colt downed him near the 40-yard line. Call it the 39 and make it to second and eight. Both of the lines for Dallas have come under pressure this year. The offensive line being criticized for not doing a better job of blocking. The defense being criticized for not getting the right amount of pressure on the passer. Rayfield Wright has gone back in to play right tackle. They feel that his leadership might help motivate that offensive line. Hill is to the left, Drew Pearson to the right. Newhouse and Dorsett behind Staubach. Complete to Dorsett, straightened immediately at the 45-yard line. Greg Stemrick and Greg Bingham made the sandwich stop. It'll be third and a long two. Very quick ball reaction from the Houston backfield, but Staubach is finding open receivers, and in spite of some very tough work going on on the line of scrimmage, he does have time to throw that football here early in the ballgame. And Staubach already facing Merlin Olson, his third third down situation. He passed for the first down the last time, and it was the run by Newhouse that kept the opening touchdown drive alive. Let's see what he calls on third and a long two from his 45. Play action. Dorsett. He 
he's out of bounds at the Houston 43 first down. So Staubach is three for three. Staubach using Dorsett more and more as a receiver and trying to get the, the football into the hands of his best runner in the open field. Dorsett does an excellent job on this play, finding himself open, but good blocking to free up Roger to get in time for the, to throw that football. Look how open Dorsett is. Turns up the sideline, does make the first down. They're in Euler territory at the 43, 44 yard line, first and 10. And that play action really froze the line. They did not know where the ball was, as you saw in that replay. Pearson in motion. Delay handoff and Newhouse, even with the confusion in the backfield, gets a couple of yards down to the Houston 41. And Staubach, as he walks back toward the huddle, head down, thinking that went over. That's not exactly how it was drawn up. Credit Elvin Bethea, number 65, with great penetration. Watch him coming in from the left side of your picture. He forces his man so deep that he puts the guard right into Newhouse. Actually knocked the guard down. That's what caused the confusion. Just a good defensive play. Newhouse does a fine job of getting back beyond the line of scrimmage. Actually picks up three yards on the play. Second down and seven. Both wide receivers to the right. And stop out to throw. Got him on their feet. He's got the emotion charged here in Dallas. Tom Landry said, what we need is a good win. We need an explosive performance to get back on track. Stavak is doing what he can. Boy, you can't throw that ball anymore perfectly. Greg Bingham had his hands up, just missed his finger. Drew Pearson now has 46 catches. That ties him with Tony Hill. He married Marcus Haynes, the great dribbling globetrotter's daughter. And he's always had that facility to be open. He's as clever with his feet as his father-in-law was with his hands. First down at the 16, Tony Dorsett at the five-yard line and down inside the five. Flag is down, and that one might be called back the first penalty of the game. expressing some concern on the sideline. Uh, I'm sure he's very happy with the way this game has started out. Coach Landry said he kind of wished he'd have had a full week of preparation this week because he wanted to evaluate exactly what could be done to change the fortune of the Cowboys. Well, right now, what looked to be great field position has been marched back 10 yards. Here's referee Gordon McCarter. And Gordon did work on his electronics. His microphone is inoperative. That is controlled by the National Football League. He was calling a holding penalty, however, and of course the ball moves back to the 25-yard line. Instead of having the ball inside the five, Stavik's going to have to work to get it into scoring territory. Pass situation, but they're not in the shotgun, and that may be because of the injury to Fitzgerald with a rookie Shaw over the ball. Up the middle, Dorsett. And he gets about four to the 21 yard line. That did not fool the Oilers. Having John Fitzgerald, their regular center out of the lineup, does put them at a disadvantage. Not only are they having to play a rookie at a critical position against Curly Culp, who's one of the tough, one of the toughest nose men in the league, but also you just can't afford to make a mistake out of that spread formation. Stavak is back and in one earlier game when Shaw got in, snapped the ball over his head, ended up in a touchdown for the other team. They certainly would not like to have that happen here. Shaw was the Cowboys number one draft pick this year out of Tennessee. Second down, 15. From the 21. Screen, Newhouse, he's got running room. 20, 15, 5, touchdown! Not only beautifully executed, but they caught the Houston Oilers in exactly the wrong defense. It's a blitz by both outside linebackers, which takes away the opportunity to react quickly to this screen. And Newhouse sees the opening, takes it, makes the last cut there, 
That field looks a little slippery, but it didn't get him over. Get, it didn't get him down. He gets into the end zone. Raphael sipped in, in to try and make it 14 to 7. And wow, what fireworks here in Dallas. 21 yards, Newhouse untouched for the score. Septian out of White's hold. And Dallas has seven more. Just under six minutes remaining in the first quarter. We had three touchdowns already. Dallas, 14, Houston, seven. Roger Staubach has driven his team 74 and 79 yards for touchdowns in this first quarter and has thrown to Drew Pearson and Robert Newhouse to give Dallas 14-7 lead. Kickoff by 70 in and out of bounds steps Carter Hartwig at the 14-yard line. That one as if it had eyes forced Hartwig right to the sidelines and even though he tried to elude the out-of-bounds marker, could not. Let's check the defense. Linebackers and deep backs for the Cowboys as they come on the field. We told you about the front four and a rebuilt front four with John Dutton starting for the first time. Mike Hegman for Tom Henderson at one linebacker spot. Bob Rudick, the middle backer, and on the right side, the veteran D.D. Lewis. Richard Castor slotted left. For a wide left, first down at the 14. Campbell hit in the backfield, breaks a tackle, and bolts out to the 21 yard line. Randy Hughes finally downed him. A gain of seven for Campbell. Mike Heckman certainly must feel a great deal of pressure out on that field today, Dick. As you said, he is taking Henderson's place, and I'm sure a lot of Attention focused on him right here. The attention is focused on him by number 86, Mike Barber, who does just a fine job of sealing him off to the inside. And I'm sure that's not the way he pictured starting this second series. Barber, we caught him throwing two outstanding blocks already on that right side, the tight end Barber. They're glad to have him back in the lineup after hurting a knee earlier in the year. Second and three. And this time it's Campbell burrowing out near the 24-yard line. It'll be very close to first down. John Dutton. An All-American at Nebraska and an All-Pro at Baltimore made the tackle. Defensive backs for the Dallas Cowboys, the men in the silver helmets and the blue stars are featured this way. Benny Barnes at the left corner and Aaron Kyle from Wyoming on the right side. The safeties, Randy Hughes and Cliff Harris, the veteran Harris, All-Pro four times. Cliffy Harris playing hurt too. He's got a problem with an arch as a number of players are this late in the season. In fact, we've got a lot of them out there operating uh, without uh, totally uh, uh, being in control of those knees and elbows and arms and so forth. Talk about Mike Barber. He still has some instability in that knee. Cliffy Harris, a courageous football player, does not want to come out of that lineup. First down, Houston at the 24. 14 to 7, Dallas. Wilson in motion, play action. Pastorini's first throw, he's in trouble and throws it away. It was nearest to Earl Campbell, but that was just a matter of Pastorini unloading. John Dutton and Larry Bethea putting the pressure on Pastorini. Dick, you talked about the rebuilt front line. Right here, they get good pressure on Pastorini as Dutton breaks through, and you see him just necktying there along with Bethea, who got pressure. But uh, certainly one of the things that had to concern Tom Landry is that Dallas has not been able to put the kind of pressure on opposing quarterbacks that they wanted. Putting Dutton into the lineup, he's an excellent pass rusher, and also giving Cole a chance to move to his natural position to tackle may give them that added pressure. Barber, the tight end, splits right. Second and 10, it's Campbell off the left side, tried to spin loose, and fortunately for the Cowboys, D.D. Lewis had a latch on Campbell. Had he not been able to keep him there, Campbell had clear sailing to the outside. He just about got away. D.D. Lewis did get a hold of him, but man, Campbell, even with the, the force of that hit, literally was just pulling away, and it just took a tremendous amount of determination from D.D. By the way, he's one of the Cowboys that Tom Landry says has had the 
the best year of any of his defenders, along with Randy White, and they'll miss him in that lineup today. Randy's out with a foot injury. And Andy Lewis, one of those that he would not miss, Thomas Henderson. That's Rob Carpenter, short of the first down. He was nailed around the neck at the 34, and it appears to be just short of the first down. A flag goes down, and Carpenter may pick up a penalty for spiking the ball in anger at himself, I'm sure. He thought he had first down yardage and slipped. Dennis Thurman came up and really put a tough necktie tackle on Carpenter. He may have been aggravated at that, too, Dick. But you're not allowed to spike that ball until the ball is dead. Could be that we uh, may have another kind of penalty. The Cowboys initially uh, seemed happy at the penalty call. But let's give the officials a chance to sort it out down there. The illegal procedure apparently against Houston. Gordon McCarter will get our NBC people got, down work on that mic. Got to wonder, uh, they're, they're coming off the field now. So either way, it's going to be fourth down. They did not pick up the first down with the play. If they take that, uh, certainly as they go back, and they will. What's, what's happening here? Oh, it's after the play, so ah, the five yards okay. are tacked That's on and still fourth down. Procedure. All right. So the down will be, it does not give them a chance to have third down again. They'll have to kick it away. Fourth and about six. They lose the five yards. And that's the first time an offensive team has been stopped in this ball game. That's right. Dallas, two possessions, two touchdowns on long marches. Houston scored on the long run by Campbell of 61 yards. And now it is Cliff Parsley averaging just under 41 yards a punt. Kicking to Wilson and Springs back at the Dallas 30. Whoops. Number 77 for the Dallas Cowboys leaning in offside. That would be Bruce Thornton, Bruce the Thornton. Uh, youngster who I'm sure if that had gotten the first down for the Houston Oilers, that Tom Landry would have had a little conversation and Ernie Stottner would have had a little conversation with that young man. That's not a smart mistake. Some, mis well, no mistake is smart, but certainly that's not the kind of an error you want to make when things are going your way in a football game. Brings up fourth and a yard. Parsley. A little more field in his advantage. Wade Manning now has joined Steve Wilson deep for Dallas. Manning just activated when Henderson was released. Beautiful kick. Steve Wilson out to the 30 and brings it back to the 33 yard line. So Dallas has the ball again. 3.35 remaining in the first quarter at Irving, Texas. Beautiful Texas Stadium where the Cowboys on this Thanksgiving lead the Oilers 14-7. 3.35 left in the first quarter, 14-7 Dallas. It's see, normally about this time I'd be getting into a little of the dressing and cranberries. And <laughs> I hope they'll save some for us, I Dex. So. But uh, certainly we're getting our share of treats on the field today with an explosive start by both these teams. Pressure shifting now to the Houston Oilers defensive team. They'd like to stop Dallas, get another chance at that football. Right now, the Cowboys would like to keep going with their offensive surge. Staubach has moved very effectively. First two possessions to two touchdowns, long drives. He starts from the 33. Dorsett fumbles, and Houston has recovered. It appeared to be Daryl Hunt, the rookie from Oklahoma, falling on the loose ball. A flag is down, but I think that's against Dallas for illegal motion. Dick, when I talked to Tom Landry earlier, and he said he couldn't put his finger on why his team has had trouble, he said, I do know one thing. The normal plays that have been big plays for us just aren't falling together, and we have made critical mistakes. Now, here is one of those critical mistakes. Dorsett, who's made a couple of big plays, bumps into the quarterback, Staubach, right there. The ball popped loose. Just a, a very simple situation of handing that football off, and bam, turnover. Houston has an opportunity. Big play by the defense. Ball at the 32. Pass to Rainey to Campbell. Campbell wrestled down at the 30, and a flag is down as well. Going back to that turnover quickly, in the last four games plus this one, Dallas has gotten the ball once and have given it up 11 times. You can't survive on that kind of ratio. Not that kind of turnovers. We have a flag on the field. They're going to call Motowns for holding. So Houston 
has also had some critical mistakes during the year. In fact, during the early part of the season, we're plagued by, uh, there's our turnover table, Dick, in the last four games, the thing you talked about, 10 Dallas turnovers, and they've only taken the ball away once. Now That's it's a minus nine. Now it's 11 to one. Uh, talking about now the Houston Oilers problem, earlier in the year, they had more holding penalties than they knew what to do with. Stopped all kinds of drives for them. And right now, they've just been assessed 10 yards. What looked to be a perfect opportunity to get back into this ball game, tie it up, uh, has not been erased, but Pastorini's gonna have to work harder at it. First down 20 at the Dallas 42, three and a half minutes left first quarter. Mike Renfro, 82, is in for the first time. Screen to Burrow. Didn't work. Number 25, Aaron Kyle made the tackle, but it was Harvey Martin that spoiled the play. Great pursuit from the inside. And if you want to see a hustling defensive lineman, you just watch Harvey Martin get out there to the inside. Now, on the outside, Kyle had taken the outside position away from Burrow. He couldn't go to the outside. Martin took away the inside position. I have to tell you, he said, we said, could you take off the hat, Harvey? He said, this is the way I look all the time. So he let it work. <laughs> when, he, when you're that size, Dick, you can look any way you want to look. You're doggone betcha. You. Second down, 20. From the 42, Pastorini. Going long, and Burrow is open. But the ball hits Kyle in the back. Incomplete. Now, Renfro is arguing that Kyle had his hand in Burrow's face. That is illegal. You can be facing the receiver and not the ball, but you can't wave your hand in the eligible receiver's face. Well, he didn't wave his hand, and that saved him a penalty right here because he had completely lost Ken Burrow. Watch Burrow turn him around here. Kyle is driving right here. He does not know where that football is. Gets his hands up, and whoo! I think you might be able to say he was waving, or would you say he was just trying to get his balance? Well, the key, though, Merlin, is that Pastorini had a man wide open and didn't, didn't throw it long it. enough. Pastorini has had arm trouble, and even though he's throwing much, much better, he is still not getting the kind of fire on that ball that he's capable of. Third and 20, three wide receivers in. Pastorini in trouble, and a flag is down, so is Pastorini, and a little late hit by David Stahl, 65, in there for the pass rush. It appeared to be holding against Dallas, and the defense celebrates. Holding against Houston. Obviously, you don't take the penalty back there. You've already lost the yardage. Pastorini suffers from a lack of mobility. He took so many shots early in his career. In fact, I can remember when he could run as well as any quarterback around. But as he's just been beaten down and those legs have been torn up over a period of time, he does not move around well back there. And that's, that hurts his performance as a quarterback. Uh, Houston recovered Dorsett's fumble at the 32. Three plays later, it's fourth and 29 at their own 49. Parsley to kick. Beautiful high spiral. Wilson at the 10. Cut down at the 11. And a flag is down as well. We had a clip. We Richard had a clip Ellender. Richard Ellender, number 85, made the tackle even though he was clipped as he made the hit. 41-yard kick by the Oilers. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. Well, certainly so far in this ballgame, we would have to say that the Dallas Cowboys have responded to the challenge that uh, Tom Landry laid out for them. They had a defensive meeting earlier in the week, too, called by the veteran players, not attended by the coaches. Talked to D.D. Lewis uh, before the game, and he said uh, we had to sort some things out for ourselves. We knew that we were not playing as well as we were capable of playing. Right now, the Dallas defense is playing as well as the Dallas offense, which is awfully well early in this ballgame. Your comment about Henderson, does that help the Cowboys or does it hurt them today? I, I think emotionally it may have brought them together. I think it may have brought them together, and I can't help but feel that maybe that was one of the things that motivated Tom Landry to make his decision. First down at the six for Dallas, leading 14 to seven. Shabak to Newhouse. Draws the crowd out around the eight yard line. We get a fish.
official word from the press area that the fumble was not charged to Dorsett, but to Roger Staubach. Staubach charged with the fumble, not Dorsett. Houston recovered, but couldn't do anything with it. Well, it was an indication, really, that uh, Dorsett really didn't get a chance to take control of the football, which uh, which was uh, proven by our pictures, as you saw the fumble just being bounced off of his body by Staubach. And again, some of the simplest things can go wrong in all of the wrong places for you. Staubach would like to get this one out of his own territory, give himself some room if he can. Staubach has been perfect so far. From his own end zone, he's in trouble. Gets it away, complete to Cosby to the 15-yard line, just short of the first down. Doug Cosby, rookie from Santa Clara, same school that produced Dan Pastorini. If you have any wonder as why Roger Staubach is one of the great big play quarterbacks in the NFL, watch him pick out the open receiver, Doug Cosby, number 84. Cosby just goes down, hooks up in the zone there. Staubach found time to throw that football. We're going to go behind the quarterback, give you a look down on the pits. Roger's under pressure here. He's going to be blindsided from the backside, just steps up, gets away from the rusher. Washington fires the ball. What a, what a beautiful play, and what smart football from Scott. Third and one, Newhouse, first down and more. Flag is down, Newhouse all the way to the 41-yard line. And his own version of the straight arm on the way. But it may be called back, we'll see. It's offside, or no, that's just a resting no, position. Holding. Some holding. You had to wonder how that play opened up so widely to the outside. Somebody just flat got tackled in there, Dick. So a 27-yard run by Newhouse called back. That was not unlike Campbell's run for a touchdown once he got in the open. I wonder if Tom Landry has ever worn a cowboy hat like the one that Bum Phillips has on. That looks like the hat you wore, the one that Bum has on with a little rattlesnake band on it. You're going to wear that hat for us at halftime? Your hat? I, I may put it on, you bet. If you're doing a game between Houston and Dallas on Thanksgiving Day, you ought to wear a cowboy hat. Where's your cowboy hat, Dick? Well, I was just wondering, no wonder that my Daniel Boone hat didn't work. <laughs> Marked back to the 12 yard line to match the number on the quarterback's back. Third down, eight. Pearson to the left, Hill to the right. Both of them have 46 catches this year. Billy Joe Dupre also to the left, and Preston Pearson, a triple left. First time out of the spread, and Staubach going to run it quite to a first down. He had to get across the 15, and the Cowboys almost knew that's where they had to build a wall to stop him. Well, and they knew exactly, the defenders knew exactly where that first down line was. They just built the line across and saved it right down on the pits with Roger Staubach. Watch the pressure coming at him now. Sees the opening right there and quickly reacts to it, runs, hoping for the first down, but he's smart enough to know that when you can't get the first down, don't get hurt. Don't get banged up. Danny White picks it away, drives it deep. Richard Ellender at the 43. He's at the 50. Flags are down, and Ellender is finally dragged down by Brinson at the 40-yard line. But it appears Houston and the illegal block to free their return man. And what a shame. The finger was pointed at number 36, Carter Hartwig, and his block was actually away from the play. It was not a necessary block. A fine return is going to be nullified by that penalty. There you see the signal from the, from the official, an illegal block thrown. Boy, that's really a shame for Houston. They still get the ball, though, in, in excellent field position, but not nearly as good as it would have been. We hope you'll join Merlin, myself. We have different assignments on Sports World this Saturday. An excellent show. We'll be in Los Angeles. Linda Fratiani, Ty Babylonia, Randy Gardner, JoJo Starbucks, some of the outstanding figure skaters in the United States and the world in star skates. Merlin from Leningrad will have the World Invitational Weightlifting Championships along with John Brody. Also, the Legends of Bowling with Jay Randolph all next Saturday on Sports World. Chance to see the new emerging Russian super heavyweight Sultan Rachmanov on Saturday deck. He's an exciting performer. Pastorini on first down. Has a man open. Can't hit Renfro at the 46-yard line. Benny Barnes, 31 on the coverage for the Cowboys. 
that's the kind of pass that literally disappeared from this Houston offense early in the year. Pastorini's arm was bothered so much that he couldn't throw anything that took a, a straight line throw like that uh, sideline pattern. He and has done better recently, though. And is it not for the fans at home to judge a quarterback as to whether he is healthy or whether his uh, age is taking something out of the arm is the long out pass. If you can't throw that, that shortens the field and usually is a demarcation. That out, you, in this case, Pastorini can throw it. Earlier, he could not. That's the first page of the last chapter. Nicely said. Incomplete to Burrow. Randy Hughes in front. Aaron Kyle behind on the coverage. Kenny Burrow, double zero from Texas Southern. Pastorini and Burrow have worked well many times over the years, and Pastorini not too happy because he felt that that one could have been caught. The ball thrown very sharply to Burrow, who was coming out of traffic, it was not an easy catch, but one that Burrow normally would make. Burrow has recorded a song, the Super Bowl itch. Line that the Oilers are about ready to scratch and hope to come up with something big, and they're nine and three here on Thanksgiving Day. the middle to the 41 yard line goes Rob Carpenter short of the first down and Dallas is going to get the ball back perhaps not until the second quarter nine seconds left in this first period Cowboys cheer the defense and the end of a very exciting start to this Thanksgiving treat in Irving Texas and to the first quarter it's Dallas 14 Houston 7 we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Texas Stadium in Irving. Cowboys 14, the Oilers 7, and Dallas control possession of the football almost 2-1 to one in that first quarter. And they're about to get it from Cliff Parsley. Rookies Wilson and Manning are deep at the Dallas 15. Parsley's second punt, make it his third, and he's kicked well. Hangs this one toward Wilson at the 19, and he's run out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Well, there are many ways to inspire and motivate a team, and Tom Landry, not unlike most coaches, has his means and manners, one of which is the, the old sign system. And there's one of those you'll find in the dressing room of the Dallas Cowboys at their training camp. Not a bad thought uh, for all of us uh, who aren't even in cowboy uniforms, Dick, but Landry is a motivator in many ways. He's a very factual kind of a man, too. Very straight-up kind of a man. He'll give you all the numbers and all the facts and figures, and, and he'll point to exactly why you shouldn't be fat. He'll show you the statistics and the whole thing. First down, Dallas at the 22-yard line. Staubach, the door set, trapped. And Bulldog down and a flag down may have a face mask penalty. I think we do. That's a shame because Robert Brazil had just made an outstanding play from his linebacking position. Let's go back and watch Brazil from start to finish. His job is first to maintain his position. You see it right there. He can't allow the cutback inside and then to pursue and string the play out. But you see the head pull back right there. No question about it. Good call by the official. Brazil did tackle him by the face mask. Robert Brazil. 75 rookie of the year defensively great speed and strength maybe the best athlete on this Houston squad according to his own teammates and, and it's a 15 yard penalty flagrant is what they rule on the tackle and uh, Brazil does not agree with that well the officials have the opportunity Dick of either calling the five yard touching the mask penalty or the 15 yard penalty in that particular case they said he literally used the mask or used it flag flagrantly as you said so they assess the stronger of the two penalties A.O. Phillips along the sidelines his team has been ticketed for 45 yards in penalties Dallas 29 first down at the 35 for the Cowboys Culp right at the line of scrimmage. He gets a yard. That's a pretty good collision between Culp at 265 and Newhouse 215. Both men build along the same line, not too tall, but mighty wide. Both have that low center of gravity. Curly Culp's been doing that for many years. He did put a real thump on Newhouse. Nick, an interesting thing to reflect on. In this first quarter, the Cowboys scored 14 points. 
in the last four games, they'd only had seven points in the first quarter. In fact, only seven points in the first three quarters of any of those four games. So they were off to a blazing start, considering what they've done the past few weeks. On second and nine, Stavach intercepted. Vernon Perry to the 45 of Dallas. Perry, who was acquired by the Oilers from Montreal of the Canadian League after three years, he's from Jackson State, was picked by the Bears in 76, elected to go to Canada, and Staubach, who has been rarely intercepted this year, that's only his ninth, is picked off, and Houston, trailing by seven, has the ball in Dallas territory, thanks to Vernon Perry. Interception of the season has positioned the Oilers at the Dallas 44. I asked Vernon Perry what the big difference is between Canadian football and American football. He said the speed of the receivers, but his speed made the difference right there. Hill caught flat-footed. Perry stepped in front of him and took that football away from him. You know, that number 32 on his back and those long legs, he looks a little like O.J., doesn't he, the way he moves. Passerini at the 44 of Dallas. Campbell. To the 40 yard line, took four Cowboys to bring him down, led by John Dutton, number 78. Game two, the Cowboys for their number one and their number two draft picks. Next year, they go to Baltimore. He's had a tough time adjusting, not only because of the flex defense, but changing from the right end to the left end, Merlin. Most people would say, well, he's still playing defensive end, but shifting from the right side of the defensive line to the left side is like trying to comb your hand with, or comb your hair with the opposite hand or eat with the opposite hand. Everything you're used to doing is on that side, and it changes the whole thing. Second down, Campbell again. Oh, he's always fighting for that last inch. He'll be short of the first down, third down, and about four. Bob Brunick from Arizona State, number 53, the middle backer for Dallas, made the tackle along with Larry Cole. Campbell's had a big first half, 86 yards already. He conceivably, at the end of today, could be the top rusher in the entire NFL. He leads the AFC by plenty. Larry Cole in on that last tackle. Happy to be back at that defensive tackle spot. He's much more comfortable there than a defensive end. It's closer to third and four. Pastor Inning going to throw. Over the middle, Burrow. That quick slant, and Burrow has it to the 14-yard line. Aaron Kyle made the tackle. Pastor Inning is mad at himself, though. If he had put that ball on the other shoulder of Burrow, and that's not good news, Burrow's still on the ground. Had he put that ball on the inside instead of the outside, Burrow would have had a touchdown. Here's that play again as Burrow on a quick pop over the middle was wide open. Pastorini gets time to throw the football. Ken Burrow just blazing across the middle. And you see it right there. Had to turn back. Made a brilliant catch. Looked like he might have twisted his back a little bit. Time is out on the field. As they work on Burrow, we'll be back to see his condition. It's 14 to 7 Dallas. 12 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Ken Burrow shaken. He was reaching toward his back as he left the field earlier, but off under his own power. He's been the leading receiver for the Oilers six straight years, including this one. First down, Houston at the 14 of Dallas, driving for a possible tying touchdown. It's 14 to 7, Dallas. Campbell inside the 10 yard line. And every time you stop Campbell, you almost have to add at least one more yard because he just won't go down on that first contact. Tom Landry talked about Earl Campbell. He said, I have never seen a player willing to do so much, literally willing to do anything they ask of him. He not only runs the football, he blocks it. He, he'll, he'll line up anywhere you want him to line up. Great compliment from Landry to a very unselfish player. And I think underline the word unselfish. That's the secret to Campbell's success. Second down, a long five. Pastorini pumps in trouble. Now throws it away. Well, there wasn't a blue shirt close to that one. Larry Cole, 63, was hounding Pastorini as we pause now briefly for station identification from Irving, Texas. This is the NBC Television Network. Channel 7, KTVB, Boise. A warm Thanksgiving Day to you from Irving, Texas, Texas Stadium. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olson. Second quarter, 11 minutes and 24 seconds remaining before the intermission. 
The Cowboys lead the Oilers 14 to 7 in this battle of two pro football this year Giants in the state of Texas. Sellout crowd at this beautiful stadium. The Cowboys scored the first two times they had the ball. The Oilers scored the first time they had it. And they're driving toward a possible time touchdown. Third down and six at the 10 yard line. It is Caster. Touchdown. No, he's out of bounds. No score. He did not get both feet down. Pastorini upset by that, felt that the ball could have been caught inside the field goal team coming onto the field. Watch it right here. You'll see Caster coming into your screen, number 88, right there. Watch to see if he does, in fact, no. A good call by the official. He had room. I don't think he knew exactly where he was. And that's a good receiver must know where he is on that field. An error by Caster, and it cost him seven points. 16 for 18 is Tony Frisch. 28-yard attempt. And the ex-Cowboy hits another. He may be the most consistent, most reliable field goal kicker of this entire NFL. He has three more, 11-16 left in the first half here in Irving, Texas. The Cowboy lead is shaved to four. Ken Burrow still in some pain on the sidelines. A bruise back, but they say he will return to action. It's 14 to 10. Dallas leading Houston. Tony Frisch, after the 27-yard field goal, kicks it away. And hits it well. Wilson at the 8. 15. 25. And out to the 28-yard line. Tony Frisch with a field goal and the kickoff. And Tony has really boiled things down rather simply. His role as a National Football League place kicker is simple as one, two, three. As, as kicker, you have three rules to survive. Number one, listen to the whistle. Number two, keep your mouth shut. And number three, keep kicking between the uprights. <laughs> He's a delightful elf from Vienna. He said that Tom Landry and Tex Ram came over to Vienna to see him as a soccer player, a pro soccer player, and they said, you kick this this ball. He said, this funny ball, you want me to kick that? Are you pulling my leg? <laughs> he does kick that funny ball, and he does a great job of it. Fumble and recovering appeared to be Staubach himself, as he did not get a clean exchange from his rookie center, Robert Shaw. We'll go back to what we said early in the game. Robert Shaw getting one of his most productive starts. He's going against a nose man, Curly Culp, who will be putting a forearm on his head all day. And one of the things that does is forces you to think about that snap. Now, Roger doesn't want to have to think about that snap. He'd like to have it be automatic. But when you've got somebody beating on you and you haven't had that much experience, you can have problems getting that ball to your quarterback. Staubach has thrown nine times. Not a ball has hit the ground. Eight complete, one intercepted. Dorset is intercepted by a couple of Oilers at the 30-yard line. Ted Thompson, number 51, in the game made that tackle. Dick, along with the good news that uh, Ken Burrow is not hurt seriously, we did see Mike Barber lift, limp off the field earlier. And if his knee is injured again, that certainly would not be good news. You see Burrow there. He's still having trouble with his back and apparently having some pain. We would hope he would be all right. But if those two are down, that really uh, puts the pressure on Pastorini because they are two of his most productive receivers. Third and eight for Dallas at the 30. Spread formation. Stavak complete. Jay Saldi at the 46-yard line. First down, Dallas. Tom Landry didn't lack confidence in that uh, young rookie center. Robert Shaw lets him snap from the spread formation. And Stavak does what he has done so successfully over the past years. Picks up the big third down situation, and away they go. Four for five today, Merlin, and passing. Stavak now is nine for ten on the game. And the only one that he's missed has been caught by the Oilers, Vernon Perry. Two touchdowns, one to Pearson, 56 yards. The other a screen to Newhouse, 21 yards. On first down, Staubach, play action. Wide open, Tony Hill has his first catch. First down, Houston 40. We talked about the matchup down in the middle. 
certainly one of the reasons that Stavak is having such a great day. He has time to throw. Shaw working on Curly Cope, getting a little help from number 64, Tom Rafferty, and then coming back in, actually three players, 67, Donovan helping. But look at the amount of time he has to throw. And you can't give Roger Staubach that amount of time. He'll do that to you every time. Fine reception by Hill, first and 10. Lots of talk about the great receivers in the game, Stallworth and Swan, Pittsburgh. You've got uh, Joyner and Jefferson in San Diego. Well, these Cowboys, the wide receivers Hill and Pearson, lead the league in yardage. Oops! No one there for Staubach except 59, Ted Washington, the linebacker from Mississippi Valley. I wonder if that was somebody, a bold play. Yeah, well, somebody went the wrong way. Staba came out, looked out. There was no one coming. Either either someone blew an audible. See, look at him right there. He's looking for someone to hand to. Newhouse had gone the other direction. And, of course, Washington said, well, come here, Roger. Well, you and I can get together on this thing. No one else to dance with? I'll dance with you. Ted Washington acquired from the New York Jets. He excels against the run. Ken Kennard, number 71, is now in for Houston on second down 15. Draw to Dorsett. Running room, 40, 35. He's near a first down at the 31. Greg Bingham made the tackle. I think Greg Semrick just left part of his attire on the field as number 33, Tony Dorsett, just faked him right out of it. Watch Dorsett. Good call by Roger. Dorsett making that quick move. Excellent acceleration. Runs away from Bingham. Watch the move right there. He just blew it right past Demerick and gets up the field for the first down. Bingham did catch up to him, but not until he'd almost gotten up for that critical first down. Going to be third and less than a yard to go, Dick. And this is where Staubach has been outstanding. Third down conversions, 4 of 5. Dorsett. 20, and a first down at the 17. We said earlier that Tony Dorsett would not run over you, but he certainly can't run away from you. That was a crossbuck action. Interesting shot. Looked like he was taking it into the line there. Hands off. Gets a nice, gets nice blocking from his offensive line. A big hole, and then makes the most of it down the field. Let's see if Roger can get it into the into the end zone. Put another seven points on the board. You saw number 35, Scott Laidlaw, sent in by Landry. He joins Dorset. <laughs> Laidlaw gets the ball, and the Oilers stop him for a loss. Uh, possibly one. Elvin Bethay, number 65, the Big E in his 12th year out of North Carolina and I made the tackle. Ted Washington on the assist. Call it no gain. Second and a long 10 now as Newhouse comes in. Laidlaw goes out. Hill is back in and 84 Cosby goes out. Dallas leading 14 to 10. Deep in the Oiler territory, just out the, outside the 16th. Both wide receivers to the left, Hill and Pearson. Play action, Newhouse. All the way down to the one yard line goes Robert Newhouse. Well, that's the Dallas offense at its best, Merlin. They had white shirts going all over the field, and Staubach looking away all the time, and then finally flipped it to Newhouse. Well, one of the things you hate to see is someone break that open against you on defense. It's an isolation of a running back against the linebacker, 44 against 54, and that's the result right there. And tragically, we also have a couple of Houston players on the ground over there. Certainly one thing that neither team wants this late in the year or ever wants really is injuries. Number 37, their great safety, Mike Reinfeld. And as you said, Dick, he has been the mainstay of that defense all year, of that defensive backfield. They do not want to lose him. He has a distinction of being the only player that will ever go from his university to the NFL, the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee, because they don't have a football program anymore. 6'2 and 195 and 12 interceptions this year. One thing we could say about working against the Dallas Cowboys on a short week, it is not easy. They run so many different formations at you, and their defense, the flex defense, is unique. 
you hate to have to have just a two-day week, really, which is what the Oilers had to get ready for them. It does put the Oilers, I think, at a disadvantage. Remember, we asked Bum about that yesterday. He says, I don't mind the short week as long as I don't have a long day. Well, Roger would like to give him a long day, as with the rest of these Cowboys. If they can score right here, they can put part of that long day together. At the one-yard line. Doesn't quite get in. And the Oilers acting as though the ball was loose. Andy Doris, Robert Brazil, and others in on the tackle of Newhouse. I think Vern Holland just had a hold of Newhouse's head. <laughs> Thought it was the football. <laughs> That's an unfortunate <laughs> error. <laughs> well, I'm sure Newhouse didn't like it. Some very good tackling down on the goal line. Newhouse has that great low center of gravity and powerful running thighs. He is a tough man to tackle at short yardage. Raphael Septien waiting for either a point after or a field goal. On second and goal, Dorset touchdown. Touchdowns scored. Well, they Berlin told you one touchdown in the last four games in the first three quarters. A total of one touchdown. They've scored three times in the first half today. Let's look quickly at that run by Dorset. Coming to the outside, Herb Scott, number 68, the blocker ahead of him, gets a piece of Vernon Holland or Vernon Perry right there. And although the ball is tucked up against that goal line, that's all it has to do is break the plane, and you can see it right there. Six points, Septien going for seven. He's got it. Five minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the first half. The Cowboys now enjoy their biggest lead. Dallas 21, Houston 10. He's to the 10, has a little opening. And no, that's Ellender out to the 23 yard line. Richard Ellender to the 23. Raphael Septien, who is about to be married. There's his fiancee. And here's the ring. Now she hasn't seen it. He said, I'll show you the ring I'm going to give her, but I, I don't want her to see it. And since she's here in the stadium today, he said, I'll, I'll let you folks at home appreciate it. He's going to be married on Saturday. As the Cowboys will have a well earned 10 day rest after this one. 21 to 10, Cowboys. Pastorini to Campbell. Hit in the backfield. John Dutton. A departure, Dick, from normal Dallas strategy. They've built their team through the draft, but they went into the trade market to get big John Dutton. And if he can make plays for them like that play, he certainly will help to fill some vacant shoes, those of Tutal Jones on the left side of that defensive line. Pastorini is three for eight, passing only 28 yards. Second and 12. Play action. Got a man open. Caster, 45, out of bounds, near midfield. The tall target, Richard Caster, the former Jet from Jackson State, has a first down for the Oilers at the 49. Let's give a little credit to Leon Gray, number 74, who kept Harvey Martin away from Pastorini. Watch it on the left side. He's going to push Harvey Martin right there beyond Pastorini. Give him time to throw that football. Caster in the open, as you said, gets the ball, pulls it down, makes a big first down. Oilers have it moving, have a little bit of time here. Let's see if they can get some points on the board. Four minutes, 19 seconds left, first half. Campbell. Mike Hegman gets him, and he's finished off by Aaron Kyle. But it was Hegman from Tennessee State, number 58, who latched onto him initially. Ironically, Hegman replacing Thomas Henderson, and it was Henderson and Hegman who collaborated on that unusual play in the Super Bowl where Henderson stripped the ball from Terry Bradshaw. Hegman went 25 yards for a Dallas touchdown, and now it's Hegman for the man who has now departed the ranks of the Cowboys. Hollywood Henderson is gone. Bruce Thornton and Dave Stalls have gone into that defensive lineup 
Give them a little more pass rushing pressure as they anticipate the throw from Dan Pastorino. Trap, and it's Wilson up the middle. And the big guy from Maryland is inside the 45 before Stalls from Northern Colorado. And Randy Hughes, the safety from Oklahoma, can make the tackle. Wilson carries the ball rarely, has 237 yards rushing this year. He's from Maryland. He was a college blocking back, and basically that's his role with the Oilers. Earl Campbell is coming off the field uh, as they replace both the backs, both of the offensive backs. Richard Castor came off too. He doesn't know what the play is, so he lines up wide left. Pastorini a laudable in this situation. Make sure they know it. Third and four. Mike Renfro, a first down. Renfro and a famous NFL name. His dad, Ray Renfro, outstanding wide receiver with the Cleveland Browns. And his dad was a former assistant coach here in Dallas. So Mike was a Cowboy fan and a Browns fan. And uh, they asked him who was his favorite. He said, oh, no doubt about that. The man. I love to watch the man. And that was Jim Brown with the Cleveland Browns. First down for the Oilers at the 38-yard line. Renfro left. Tight formation. Wilson in motion and Campbell sweeping left. Oh, what running by Campbell to the 30-yard line. The big guy is quite a dancer. It's almost unfair to give a man that size that kind of agility and balance. Let's go down and give you the feeling of what it must look like to have Campbell running at you. Watch the cuts here. Breaks inside, gets away from a possible tackle by Hegman, right over the top of number 25, Aaron Kyle, and a shoestringer there, or he'd have had to have been ridden down from behind and would have gotten even bigger yardage. Second and two, Campbell has 95 yards rushing this first half. Wilson, this time on a trap, picks up the first down at the Dallas 27. John Dutton made the tackle for Dallas. That brings us up close to the two-minute warning. And Houston, interestingly, going to call a timeout here before that two-minute warning. Well, they probably want to decide what do they want to do in this situation. This is kind of a throwaway down, Dick. I'm sure Pastorini over to talk to Bump Phillips and to the offensive coordinators of that Houston offense. Merlin looking ahead to Sunday. After you come back from uh, Leningrad and I get back from Los Angeles. <laughs> That'd be a quick trip. Sports World on Saturday. On Sunday, we're going to be out in Denver in the snow, but we've got a great lineup, a doubleheader for you on NBC beginning at 12.30 with NFL 79. Cleveland and Pittsburgh, and I know some of the Browns and Steelers watching this one, they'll go at it on Sunday. Of course, Cleveland just a game behind the Steelers and the Oilers. Buffalo at New England. Chuck Knox trying to get above 500. New England trying to stay atop the AFC East. Then at 4 o'clock, we'll be at Denver. The Raiders beat the Broncos earlier this year out on the West Coast. Kansas City at San Diego trying to spoil the Chargers fun. And Miami trying to rebound at Baltimore. You talk, Dick, about emotion. At uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh game, those teams, they don't dislike each other. They hate each other. And, of course, after the tremendous surprise to, to Pittsburgh fans of what happened to them this last week, they've got to be trying to get back into the ball game. And I would hate to have been in their practices with Chuck Noel during this week of practice. Indeed. That should be the game of the week. Earl Campbell, big hole. And he's gone to the races again. Oh, and I like that touch. Just lay the ball down. Almost as simple as the run. And a man had a shot at him, and he ran through that tackle as if it was made of feathers. Lander himself said it. He said, that man is awesome. He's unbelievable. He can do it all. And he just did part of it here. Again, giving you the chance to feel what it must be like for those defensive backs to see 235 pounds hurtling at them. And Earl just makes it look easy on into the end zone. There it is. This is, is that what you do when you get a touchdown? Just set it down like an Easter egg. I like that. With all the flair of the touchdown spike, that's a nice contrast. Frisch tacks on the extra point, and we've got a ball game that is squeezed into a four-point lead for Dallas with two minutes exactly remaining in the first half. It's now the Cowboys 21, and Earl Campbell and the Oilers have 17. Well, the Oilers, Earl Campbell has his second touchdown as the Houston club goes 77 yards in eight plays. 
Campbell already over the 100 yard mark in the first half. He has 122 yards. And great for all of us here at NBC to be at Texas Stadium, Texas Rams sports edifice here in Irving, Texas. And we wish you all a very happy holiday. Hope along with the things that are happening around the world while you celebrate this day with your family that you think about how fortunate we are to be in this great country. And this tradition part of Thanksgiving, of course, the play of the big football game, usually between the two local high school rivals, and now including, of course, the NFL clubs. Ron Springs at the seven. 20. And he's out to the 33-yard line, a crack in the Houston door, and Springs shot through it. At halftime, NFL 79. Mike Adam Lee with us here in Irving, Texas. Brian Gumbel. Boy, he was running around today between the parade and back in the studios in New York. Brian, Earl Campbell are the leading rushers in the nation today. <laughs> Maybe that's how he stays so thin. Well, at the 34, wouldn't you know it? That's Earl Campbell's number. It's kind of, we've seen a lot of that today. Dallas has a minute 55 to add to the 21 17 lead out of the spread. Preston Pearson is in at one of the wings. Sabat hits Pearson, and he wiggles three and gets a couple of more out to the 44 before Greg Bingham from Purdue can make the tackle. Bingham, number 54, said he almost went to Notre Dame, was recruited by the Irish as a tight end, but then Notre Dame had a chance to get a guy named Dave Casper. So Bingham said, I found myself going to Purdue. He's a fine linebacker, has led this team in tackles for six years and is leading him again this year. Staubach again out of the spread, dumps it off to Dorsett at the 40, a beautiful move at the 50. He's at the 40, still on his feet to the 39. First down, Dallas will use a timeout, their first with a minute 15 left. Dick, I think uh, since John Unitas left the game, that my vote for the man who uses that clock as well as anyone in football has to go to Stavik. And he does it again here. Just dropping the football off from the spread formation to Tony Dorsett. He's got, he's got defenders spread all over the field, gets it into the hands of the explosive Dorsett, and look at him. Goes past Ted Thompson, 51 right there, works around, actually doubled across, almost got away that time until they finally got him on the ground. But he's got great field position, an opportunity here maybe to get another three or even seven points on the board. His own man stopped him. I wonder if we have time to go back and see the start of that again. That first fake by Dorsett. I mean, he seemed to have full speed that was going to go to his right to the outside. And then that quick stop and, and, and almost in the same motion. He's so quick, you don't realize the kind of move he put on the defense. Yeah, Mike Weissman and uh, Ted Nathanson have it for us again. Let's watch the first fake by Dorsett. Watch Tony now. Again, Dick. Just gets it in the open here. You'd like to have your best runner with the football in that much room. But right here, he's just going to put a little move right. Oh, you got it already. But there again, he's going to come back. Look how far he cuts. That's almost more than a 90-degree turn right there. And if his blocker had kept going, he might have gotten more yardage out of it. Excellent slow motion. You don't quite appreciate how quick that first move was, but it is a first down at the 39. Again out of the spread. A minute 15 seconds remaining. First half, Dallas leads by four. Wrapped up by Curly Culp. Culp stayed at home. There's the sagacity of a veteran defensive tackle. Didn't wander away and was in the right spot in the middle of that screen. I think a little good fortune. He got knocked down, got up, and found himself looking at Pearson, who had the football, tackled him. Well, that's big wise. And the wise guy be knocked up. Certainly the right place at the right time. Oh, first down. Oh, Johnny Hill juggling the ball, incomplete. Fans are booing on the far side, but you saw it clearly. Hill did not have control. Stops the clock with 46 seconds left in the half. Roger Stavak, certainly amazing in the way he can throw that football so accurately. I'll tell you, Dick, Roger Stavak did lengthen or shorten, I think, in fact, shorten a few of my seasons over the years with that kind of throw. They'd like to put a few more points on the board before they go in at halftime, give the Cowboys an even wider edge than they have over the Oilers. 
Roger owning an obvious advantage passing in this first half. Third down, 14. He's five for six. Third down conversions. Good protection. Saldi incomplete. Nice play by Vernon Perry, who is hawking the tight end across the middle of the field. And 69, Andy Doris was pressuring Roger Staubach. And that's a big play right there. They're trying to get the first down, trying to maintain and sustain the drive. Still had 41 seconds on the clock. The pass is on the money, and Saldi would have caught it. But watch the stripping action right there. Perry takes the arm, pulls it away. You can't catch that ball one-handed. Danny White, the punter, but also an excellent runner and passer, and the Oilers are not going to take any chances, and he does kick it. They let it bounce at the five, and it's down by Aaron Mitchell, the rookie cornerback from Nevada, Las Vegas, at the two-yard line. 30 seconds left. I don't think we'll see any wild antics from Houston. Uh, probably content to go in with with the score 21 17 and starting the drive on their own 4 yard line. And they mark it at the four. Roger Staubach, Dan Pastorini. Pastorini, a comment by Mike Barber, his tight end, in jest naturally said, You fellas always talking about Craig Morton being uh, one of the slowest quarterbacks, the least mobile. He said, Pastorini is so slow when he was a kid, his mother made dinner at six and called Dan at 5 30 to make sure he got there. <laughs> That's unkind. Guido Merkins in motion, playing the wide receiver, and that's Campbell protecting the football out to the five-yard line. I'm going to give you a quiz, Merlin. Who is the only NFL quarterback, listed quarterback, to catch a touchdown pass in the NFL this year? We'll let you think about that. We'll give you a hint. He caught it against the Pittsburgh Steelers, a quarterback who has caught a I, touchdown pass. I know the answer. I'm going to let you. I'll let our fans at home think about it for a second. Final seconds. And the end of an outstanding, entertaining first half. Dallas leading 21-17. The answer is Guido Merkins. That's right. <laughs> Number 12, Guido Merkins, listed as the third string quarterback. There he is. He's also first into the locker room. He got a touchdown. His only catch of the year. Holman.